If you buy this book right now, I make $0. If you buy this book right now, I make $5.12. If you buy this book right now, $1.75, $1.40, $2.57. Why are the numbers for these books so all over the place? Well, selling books is kind of complicated. I have about a dozen published books right now. None of them are New York Times bestsellers. Some of them make money. Some of them make you know, less money. That's not how it works for everyone. Fifty Shades of Grey obviously made a lot of money for the author. Lots of other people write a book and it sells a few hundred copies and that's it. A bunch of other people sell romance and mystery novels specifically on Kindle and have sold millions of copies. So how do books make money? Or in many cases, not make money? When you write a book, there are basically two avenues you can take. Traditional publishing and self-publishing. Self-publishing is pretty straightforward. You write the book, you edit the book, or you pay somebody else to edit it. You lay out the interior of the book, or you pay somebody else to lay out the interior. You design the cover of the book, or have someone else design it. You pay for an ISBN number, then you put the book online so people can buy it. When someone buys the book, it gets printed and sent to them. You make a few dollars. I self-published this book last year. Using this as an example, I set the price at $14.99, so when somebody buys a paperback, I get $5.12. I set the price of the Kindle intentionally low at $3.99, so when someone buys a Kindle, I get $2.14. Last week, I sold five copies total and made $16.53. When you're self-publishing, you're the only person concerned with how much money the book is going to make, so you can set the price whatever you want. If you just want it out there in the world, you can make it really low. Alternatively, you can say to yourself, oh no, my book is high art and charge $150 a copy if you want. I don't know if you sell very many copies of the book that way. Traditional publishing is quite a bit different. Publishers are businesses, so you have to present them with an idea for a book that they think they could sell to bookstores and readers. So you come up with an idea, and then you write a book proposal. You include things like the summary of the idea, your biography and your background, a table of contents, a few sample chapters, and some ideas of who the target market is for the book and what kind of other books it would compare to or even compete with. You send your proposal to the publisher, or if you have an agent, you send your proposal to your agent and the agent sends it to the publisher. The publisher reviews the proposal and they decide if they want to take on the book or not. For some types of books like memoir and fiction, you would send the entire completed manuscript instead of just a few sample chapters. If they like your idea, they offer you a publishing contract, which lays out the financial stuff. It's not as complicated as say a health insurance policy, but it can get kind of complex. The first thing you would notice on a publishing contract is a big number called an advance on royalties or an advance. This can range anywhere from zero dollars to several thousand to well into the six figures. Or if you're somebody who's already famous like Prince Harry, I imagine it's in the millions. The advance is sort of the publisher betting on how many copies of the book they think they can sell. A publisher can probably safely assume they'll sell more copies of Michelle Obama's memoir than say a first time author with 300 Twitter followers. The advance is essentially money you receive in order to write the book. It can often be broken up into several payments. Say you get a $9,000 advance, maybe you get $3,000 up front when you sign the contract, $3,000 when you deliver the first half of the manuscript, and the final $3,000 when you deliver the completed manuscript. The advance is an advance on royalties or future earnings of the book, so when the book comes out you probably won't make any money on the first few thousand copies of the book. In the contract, the publisher will promise you a certain percentage of the book's sales, say 15% of the wholesale price or 7% of the cover price. So if the cover price of your book is $20, at 7%, your percentage is roughly $1.40 on each copy sold. The other option is a percentage of the wholesale revenue, which is the money your publisher receives when they sell copies of your book to independent bookstores or Barnes & Noble or Amazon. A bookseller usually buys copies of a book from a publisher at about 45% of the cover price. So if you're selling them a $20 book, they're paying $9, the author receiving 15% of that. That's about $1.35 per copy of your book sold in a store. Amazon pays a significantly lower wholesale price for books, so publishers and authors make less less money per copy of the book sold through Amazon. This is kind of traditionally why publishers and authors would rather have you buy their book in an independent bookstore. Whenever I have a new book come out, people will ask, where should I buy the book so you get the most money? And of course there's a simple answer to that, but I just tell them to buy it at their favorite bookstore. I'm a huge fan of independent bookstores, but not every town has one, and I'd rather have people buy the book than not have it at all. So a big advance is 
nice because you get a big chunk of money, but if you get it and your book doesn't sell that well, that may be all the money you ever get. Sometimes an author will get a book contract based on some excitement around their work or some other reason, and they'll get a really big advance, and the book won't sell that well, which essentially means the publisher is kind of losing money on that book. I don't know how often this happens, but you can kind of imagine how it might tank your career. Like if your publisher gave you a $500,000 advance to write a book and it only sold 50,000 copies in the first three years, that's kind of like somewhere around $400,000 that they haven't recouped. Why would they sign you up to write another book? There are all sorts of pros and cons to traditional publishing and to self-publishing, and I'm a big fan of both depending on the project. I'll try to do a video on that sometime in the future. This book is making a little bit of money right now because it's been out for almost four years and it didn't have a big advance to recoup. I think it was $4,000, so it didn't have to sell a ton of copies in order to start making money. This book is making $0 per copy right now because it's a little less than two years old, had a bit bigger of an advance, and it hasn't earned it out yet. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully by the end of this year it will. This book will probably never earn out its advance. I self-published this book. And if you buy a copy today, I will get a check for $5.12 sometime next month, which is kind of cool. This manuscript I've been working on for about a year now, and I'm currently looking for a publisher for it. Or maybe I'll self-publish it. Who knows?